Next. Users on a voice for men's forum describe relationships between men and women as hunter, male, prey, female, mating dynamics, as though women are objects to be pursued and not human beings, with the implication that successful men are those who can capture as many women as possible. So she actually links to the claim this time and not just the site. So I'm actually able to examine her claims. The thread she links to starts off with a post stating an honest question from an average joe greetings all i am an average guy in my late 30s i've noticed something since i was a teenager that has bothered me a little and i really haven't had the nerve or the avenue to ask about until now so here goes i've noticed that many women seem to want all of the same opportunities they think are afforded to men while maintaining all of the privileges traditionally afforded to women i've asked over and over again why if women can do everything i can do do I need to keep paying their way if we are dating? Also, why, if women are equal to me, am I expected to defend their honor? Aren't they capable of doing that themselves? Also, why if women are equal to me must I most often be the one who pursues them? I've really received a straight answer I've also never really asked. I'm single and never been married, mostly because that is how I like living, but also because I just don't see the point of playing a somewhat tired and rigged game. So please folks let me know what you think good or bad. Now that's what I'd consider a fair comment with some reasonable questions, uh, but let's get to the hunter prey bit. It appears in a reply later in the same thread. It reads, Feminists claim hunter male slash prey female mating dynamics are learnt and can be unlearnt. Reality and history shows us that they aren't and they can't. So you still have to get your ass across the barn, say hello and do your best to cough out something half interesting. Now, strangely, the delusional author of the Humanist article reads this as, and I quote, As though women are objects to be pursued and not human beings, with the implication that successful men are those who can capture as many women as possible. Wow. Seriously fucking wow. Where did the commenter on AVFM say anything like that? His comment is fair and factual. Most of the time, the mating game is initiated by men. Not because we see women as objects or wish to capture as many as possible, as our delusional humanist feminist author claims, but because women typically don't initiate the dating game. They leave it up to men to make the first move and risk rejection. But by all means, ladies, start doing your part. I fully encourage you to start risking your egos and start making the first move. Or should I start a hashtag called Femininity So Fragile? Next. While these groups may at first seem ridiculous, humanists should not dismiss them completely, largely because they are attempting to claim the term humanism to promote their anti-women agendas. Once again, let me stress, being critical of feminist ideology is not the same thing as being anti-women. Just like hating Nazis doesn't mean you want to kill all Germans. Next. Humanists should also be concerned because, even though there are individuals in the men's rights movement who identify as religious, many also identify as atheists agnostics or non-religious. While atheists and humanists are often quick to rightly criticize the sexism of the religious right, the vitriol spewed towards women by non-religious men's rights activists, MRAs, should also be a wake-up call to combat sexism within the secular community. None of which she has demonstrated. Disagreeing with feminism is not the same as sexism. Next. There is evidence that some of the perpetrators of recent mass shootings in the U.S. were motivated, at least in part, by the stud and tough guy images of masculinity upheld by men's rights activists. Really? And which MRAs are promoting this tough guy image? Name them. Next. Elliot Roger, who a little over a year ago killed six people and wounded 14 others in Isla Vista, California left behind a manifesto in which he blamed his rage on his perceived lack of manliness and his inability to acquire a beautiful girlfriend. Just last week, 
a high school student in Idaho threatened to kill all the girls at his school because the cheerleaders wouldn't send him nude pictures. As the country still grieves with the families of the victims of the Umpqua Community College shooting in Oregon, the media is reporting that the gunman, Christopher Harper Mercer, also left a manifesto for police in which he described his sense of failing to live up to expectations of masculinity or find a girlfriend. Online writings attributed to Mercer also indicate that he admired previous mass shooters, including Roger. None of which has a single thing to do with the men's rights movement. Of course, this hasn't stopped dishonest assholes from trying to falsely associate us to just about anyone who's done something wrong. I covered Elliot Roger yet again last episode, as well as a couple of articles on Mercer and their lack of evidence. And of course, this has continued from the Australian. The dark web beyond the reach of metadata retention laws. It states, Like Harper Mercer, Roger whined about being rejected by women and despised men who were able to enjoy healthy sexual relationships with women. Harper Mercer and Roger suffered serious developmental and mental health issues. Both used 4chan and other social media forums like Reddit and a range of deeply unpleasant men's rights websites to spout their fury against the world. You'll note, none of these so-called deeply unpleasant men's rights websites are ever named because they don't exist. There is of course no evidence that Mercer or Roger ever so much as visited a single men's rights website, let alone that they were influenced by the movement. Essentially this is the boogeyman under the bed designed to frighten children. And then there's this from Before It's News, which states the police authorities are being silent about Mercer's purported manifesto. We do know that he likely had white supremacist leanings, may have been a Satanist, and that his writings may have featured virulently racist ramblings about black men and sex. Mercer is a product of the men's rights and other semi-intellectual sores where insecure men go to stroke one another. Wow, a white supremacist satanic men's rights activist. I'm going to have to bring this up at the next KKK Men's Rights Black Mass meeting. We have orgies and a potluck every second Thursday night. Of course, the author of Before It's News forgot to mention that Mercer was a member of the Illuminati and worked with Bigfoot in the JFK assassination. I mean, if you're going to just make shit up, why not go fucking crazy? I expect the author's next article will be about how the dinosaurs built the pyramids, or something equally factual. Well, factual from a modern-day journalistic point of view, that is. And then there was this lovely tweet. Chris Harper Mercer was a known member of the MRA, a so-called men's rights movement. The victims that have been identified so far are women. I am happy to report that numerous people demanded evidence. Of course, none was ever given. I'm guessing it's only a matter of time before this tweet is cited as evidence by the Raw Story or Huffington Post or the Daily Kos or some other bankrupt piece of shit that passes as journalism these days. I mean, that's what's considered proof these days, isn't it? just some random person's opinion on the internet but anyway back to the humanist article next these young men's perception of women as owing men affection and sex as well as their view of women as objects instead of people mirrors our culture's continued objectification of women instead of granting them full humanity that roger and mercer would go to such lengths as to kill others in an attempt to prove themselves men reveals the disturbing definitions of masculinity perpetuated by our wider culture and amplified by the mra community you'll note that she gives no evidence that mercer or roger were connected to the men's rights movement it's strange, isn't it? I mean, she was able to give us a citation for the wage gap, but nothing actually connecting these two to the men's rights movement. As for the claims that Mercer and Roger just wanted sex and saw women as objects, I don't buy it. Don't get me wrong, I'm in no way defending these two lunatics or their actions. But let's look at Elliot Roger. He came from a wealthy background and presumably had access to disposable cash. 
If all he was interested in was treating women like objects to be used for sex, then why didn't he visit prostitutes? I'm guessing he could afford it. He could have gotten sex and nothing more, right? Just used a woman for a body? Isn't that what feminists claim he wanted to do? The fact that he didn't do this, but instead complained about being ignored by women, would suggest he wanted more than just a fuck. He actually wanted female validation. Of course, none of this in any way excuses his actions, but the way feminists reduce him to a stereotype of male sexual desires and how those desires are dangerous shows us a real insight into the feminist mind. Next. Humanists, real humanists who actively promote human rights for all and equality for women, must be vigilant in defining what the humanist philosophy really is, as well as what it is not. This of course is very telling, isn't it? Equality for women, but she doesn't mention equality for men? I would assume that she only thinks women have inequalities, but she actually mentioned some men's rights issues earlier. Next. Humanism is most certainly inclusive of feminism, and the American Humanist Association's Feminist Caucus is an example of individuals of all genders and gender identities who identify as both humanists and feminists working toward women's equality. The American Humanist Association will continue to defend women's rights, especially from frequent attacks by the religious right to prevent access to necessary reproductive health care such as sexual education, contraception, and abortion but threats to women's rights are now also coming from people who claim to be humanists though the views they hold run contrary to the humanist philosophy there is no reason why someone calling themselves a humanist can't also call themselves a feminist no doubt some feminist ideology may be considered incompatible with some humanist beliefs by some but not all feminists are the same or subscribe to the exact same ideology. But what I'm seeing in this article is the demand that if you are a humanist, then you must also be a feminist. That you must subscribe to mainstream feminist ideology. And the demand that humanism shouldn't concern itself with the well-being of all humans, but almost exclusively focus on female issues. In essence, it's yet another case of feminism trying to take over yet another movement and demand that its ideology is the only true ideology. And if this is the type of bullshit supported by the American Humanist Association, to be honest, they can just go fuck themselves. Next. Humanists must not let MRAs dictate the conversations surrounding humanism and feminism. Instead, we must continue our long-standing tradition of working toward women's equality and affirming solidarity with the feminist movement. And here we have yet another Atheism Plus. Fuck that bullshit. Next.